What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I'm here to show you guys the living room of my Airbnb property which you guys have seen me document the process of in the last year. From the original tour to the design and demolition process to the installation of some of the millwork, the finishing touches are all in and we're here to show you the most controversial but also most important part of the unit in my opinion and that is what looks out to this beautiful view of downtown. And being a two bedroom unit, that was one of the reasons why I really wanted this place because it was also in a zoning that allowed for Airbnb. But on top of that, it had one trademark feature that I always like to have in an investment property. And that is the fact that it has this huge panoramic view of the corner unit throughout downtown. And you can look over to like the Olympic Mountains, you can see the intersection of downtown and the bedrooms are located on a side that is sunrise and the other is sunset. So you really do get the best of both worlds but it is like a very bright unit and having this circular kind of living room did raise a few questions as to what I was going to do here. And in fact, I'm someone who was on Instagram all the time and I had seen these like Russian render pages that had all these weird concepts that I've never actually seen done before. And I figured there's no better example to be able to try that concept but this unit. And so here we have it. It not only allows some separation in this space by having a desk on one side and the living room on the other, but it also zones up this kind of living room area so that you have a dining table, you have like a kind of space behind there to go over to the bedroom, and you also have like a bar shelf over here to have a bit of storage, the IO, the technology, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really curious if you guys actually think this was a good idea, because to be honest, Everybody was against it, the designer was against it, and most people didn't really think it was a good way to utilize this beautiful view. But after it all like was put together, I've got quite a few messages saying that it actually turned out quite nice and I have to say it turned out better than expected as well. With Airbnb properties, I really want to like try to push the limits just a little bit of like some crazy ideas, see if they're good ones and who knows, some of them carry over to the properties that I'm living in or using as an office, whereas others are strictly for Airbnbs and that is it. So when it comes to the media wall itself, it uses the rounded slatted millwork material that is also used in the kitchen and it ties in with the island. This is the material from Elmwood which is like a light walnut color and the reason why I love using wood tones so much is because depending on the light it really does shift towards that so sometimes it might have more of like a moody tone and in today's case the sun just bounces right off it and it just has a bit of character and I feel like with the wood floors and everything and like the warmer feel of this unit it does go quite well together and some of the other touches include a bit of a sill on the bottom so you can have like a game console or something and that is the phoenix gray material that is also found to panel up the fridge and as an accent color in the actual kitchen. In terms of the actual tech though, you guys might know the Samsung Frame TV has actually been around for many years now. But I'd say, especially in like the interior design space, it didn't really become very, very popular until the last year or two. Some people love their TVs. In my case, I love to have like a 77, 83 inch TV. But for others, having a TV in the middle of the space is just not the best way to present your living room. So this Frame TV not only gives guests like a nice piece of artwork, maybe we can put something that ties into like the West Coast for example, but at the same time, especially in the middle of the place, the frame and everything does integrate quite well. And this TV overall, I think really does integrate. It comes with the wall mount and everything, so it sits very close to the wall. And with the white accents, it ties in with the Chantilly lace paint that I chose for the rest of the unit. And that is kind of like my go-to. It's a very crisp white that brings out the brightness in the space and it often makes like a smaller condo feel as large as possible. When it comes to the Samsung Frame TV, it has become a lot more affordable in the past couple years and I've seen it on sale quite often and if you're looking to save some money right off the bat, then the previous year models like I've done here are the ones that I tend to go for. But one thing that I do like about the new models is that they kind of have a 45 degree miter to it and so it just adds the level of realism when it comes to giving off the frame effect. One feature that I really like about the one that I have right here is that it does 
have ambient sensing. So you can set it in terms of its sensitivity level. And if you're not in the room for a certain amount of time, it will turn off to save power and also the longevity of the actual display. But when you are in the unit and it senses that it's like the daytime and stuff, then it'll display a piece of art. So it always gives you the effect that it is a, just a piece of art in your room. So when it comes to the other units in this building that have the exact same layout, and when I stopped by for the showing, I noticed that everybody had their TV in the corner cove like this. And it is like a very awkward corner where you either have like a bit of a weird glass TV stand that is rounded and you can't really fit a large TV, but with the kind of spanning living room, you can fit a pretty large couch. And I just felt like it didn't make much sense. And although there are a few options, as you guys might have seen me do before this media wall was up, I feel like the best use of this corner was to have a bit of a bar and display shelf set up. There isn't really much room in this unit for like a ton of display areas for like photos and some props. And so having a corner like this and giving you the layers is just a way to be able to entertain. Because I feel like at the end of the day, if you have a downtown unit that has a great view, you wanna have people over to enjoy a meal, enjoy a drink and stuff like that. So these are actually matching shelves to the entire Walnut Millwork setup. And I just have like some props here for now. Honestly, I didn't really know what to put on it yet, but even having like a power outlet where you can have your home speakers, maybe charge your phone, laptop or anything like that. Obviously you can do whatever you want, but down here, it is the cabinet setup where I'm actually going to have stuff like the router and we can kind of customize the shelves here and just have different supplies and all of the TV systems and all that are down there because one option if you want to set up cable TV is to actually have a wireless box and the receiver inside the wall here and so you don't actually have to have any wires or coax traveling to the actual media wall. So that is just a good way to have like a very invisible setup and because I was already like taking everything apart Part in this unit and adding electric shades, I figured it would be worthwhile to just optimize the setup a little bit better. This countertop is the exact same as the kitchen, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about the use of this space here. It does have the same angular alignment with the media wall over here. So before we move on, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Basus and their SuperSci Pro 30 watt charger. As you guys can see, this video talks about like the tech and design aspect. And with the amount of tech around here, you want to keep things charged. And whether you have like a smartphone, a tablet, some game controllers and stuff like that, you definitely do want to have a nice power brick that is able to keep your devices juiced up and have a decent wattage as well. So you take a look at the back here. This right here is a charger that has USB type C and USB A. When it comes to like new devices like the iPhone or the iPad, you're probably gonna be using USB type C, but the USB A is still very useful for stuff like game controllers where a lot of the times they still come with the old cables. So having the option to do so is nice, but on top of that, Basus also has like a dual wattage technology that is able to effectively adjust the wattage depending on the input you're using and the number of them that you have. So for example, if you just have something connected to USB type C, it will utilize that full 30 watts. But if you have something connected to USB type C and type A, it will have 18 watts allocated to the USB type C and 12 watts allocated to type A. It does a really good job of keeping your devices safe, regulating the temperatures, but also giving you the fastest charge percentage possible. And for example, on the new iPhone, you can expect 60% charge in just half an hour. And all this comes in a form factor that is about 85% smaller than Apple's 30 watt charger while also giving you two inputs. And if you wanna take this on the go, just go ahead and close the prong, stick it in your backpack or pocket, and you're good to go. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below and a huge thanks to Basus for sponsoring this video. So if you guys are wondering what's on the backside of this media wall, it's kind of a waste of space, to be honest. It is literally just like a weird divider. And if you're trying to separate a room, that would make total sense. But just to give some practical use to this media wall itself, the idea that I had all along that I feel like is a little bit more original um, is the fact that we have a bit of a desk setup in the back here. I do feel like there are ways that it could have been done a little bit better. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably have some shelving up here or like some areas for books and like just like maybe a bit more decor because this whole wall is actually completely hollow. It is not very wide at only 10 inches, but I feel like having some recessed shelving could have been good, but I just didn't really want to spend the money to be honest because I already had to pay for all these other custom specs. But the way this works over here is that 
You can either just like have your luggage and stuff and keep it out of the way of the bedrooms, or you can also just fold this down here. And even though it might look like it's a little bit loose, this is totally able to support the weight of anything that you need on your desk setup. And you can just put your laptop and have a beautiful view of downtown while you are just like doing some work. So I feel like this is actually a pretty chill spot for anyone who is working from home or traveling or just wants like a bit of a space outside of like the dining room and the island chairs to just have their laptop out, do some reading, have like a writing table, then I feel like this is the perfect use. Obviously you're not gonna have like a monitor or anything too crazy over here, but you do have power outlets, which is something that is a must to charge your smartphone, charge your laptop. And I think it'd be cool to have like a bit of decor back here um, and just like some space to have like books. Maybe I'll line this up with like some leather just to protect the surface a little bit and give you something a little bit softer to work with. But other than that, I feel like this was kind of a good use of the space here and it just gives someone their own area and there's plenty of room to have like a real office chair but in this case we just have a dining chair. So right below the desk itself, here's where all the IO for the actual TV and anything else is. So there's a bit of shelving there, you can have some accessories and at the same time you can also have your TV receiver and everything. There are power outlets in there, we are going to vent this a little bit but here is the one connect box that comes from the Samsung Frame TV. And this is kind of like a love it or hate it when it comes to the Frame TV. Having the One Connect system means I don't have to wire all of these things back to the TV. But at the same time, this cable is very delicate and so we have to be very, very careful with it. In this case, it is the perfect setup because being able to have the HDMI and all these connections modifiable when everything else is in the wall right here is just a lifesaver. And so I feel like this whole wall was built with the intention of putting a Samsung Frame TV. So just to the left of the living room, I had a few ideas in this area. There were simple ones, there were crazy ones, kind of like the media wall, but being an Airbnb unit, I already felt like I kind of put in too much stuff that I wouldn't really want to spend money on if I wasn't living in it. And so some of the ideas included some wainscoting on this side, maybe building like a nice breakfast nook with like benches that go around and just a small table here and not trying to interfere with like the traffic of the general flow of the space. But the easiest option and honestly the most economical that I'm very happy with actually is this table right here. It comes with the three chairs, you can pick it up on Amazon and it is only about 33 inches in terms of its width. So it's definitely not the largest out there, but I do feel like this is a bit of an awkward space to have like a four or six person dining table, especially with the bathroom door right there. This mirror is one that I also have in my office, for example, and I just felt like it would help make the space feel a little bit bigger. Um, and in the case of like getting dressed and all that, it is better than nothing. Uh, I did think of putting like a big calendar, like a extended calendar on this wall. I went and purchased one, but honestly, after opening it up and trying to see how it actually looked, it just like didn't really belong here. So for now, there's no art on this wall, but yeah, this is just like a bit of a dining table. You have a great view of the TV from here, looking out to the unit and everything. So if you guys are looking for an easy solution, then go on Amazon, look up like an Eames replica, and you can find all different sorts of sizes for the table. And here's just like a fake Ikea plant. So when it comes to some of the furniture sections, you guys have seen me feature products that are more made for like compact spaces, condos and apartments that really follow like a Scandinavian look. You might remember in the office when we went with like a compact couch setup and a few side chairs, just because we wanted to be able to maximize the kind of orientation, be able to move things around. And in this case, this is obviously not the biggest space. So you have to be able to pick the furniture relative to the number of people who are going to be enjoying it. So this right here, I feel like has the perfect balance um, from Rove Concepts. It is called the Dresden and it not only has a bit of storage on the front here, but at the same time, there's a bit of a table if you wanna have some food, books and that kind of stuff. And I decided not to put a coffee table. That would have just taken up too much room right around this area. And if it's something that you feel like could fit in here, I think it would still go very well. But just because of how narrow the area is, I think this couch is very, very comfortable. And it has like a nice fabric finish to it that also looks great with all that natural light, very clean and neutral. And with like the rigid back setup, it kind of separates the area between the main bedroom entrance and the rest of the unit because everything 
everything is a little bit like tightly compacted together due to it being a bit of an oddly shaped condo orientation, which is why I liked it so much. This rug right here is also just like a neutral color. I'm not really good at picking rugs to be honest, but this was like literally a hundred bucks. It's five by seven and it just fits this couch perfectly. It goes with the color of the sill and the accent color, but just a shag rug is really good for, I feel like Airbnbs, um, because it doesn't really show that much dirt at all. Obviously we're going to clean it in between every guest, but it doesn't really like pill up, it doesn't shed, and in general, as a low maintenance item, I hope this was a good choice. I do hope it's like pretty low maintenance, but generally speaking, I would say this couch turned out really nice. The walnut goes together as like a mid-tone accent with the actual slat wall, and the floors are just a little bit lighter. And I did have my worries about mixing the floor colors together. Honestly, when the first few floor pieces went in, I thought it looked absolutely awful, and I wasn't sure if I should just like put the brakes on that before they continue installing them. But the end result of mixing a few wood tones together did turn out quite nice, but I do recommend anyone who is like renovating their place to at least compare the samples together with the stone selection before you proceed with a full order. So when it comes to the shade system and how we integrated this media wall and the power and all that kind of stuff, when it came to actually like redoing this area, there was originally 10 individual blinds. And honestly, that was the first thing that I wanted to get rid of, those aluminum blinds that you see all the time. Just having shades is a lot cleaner. But I also figured because there were so many individual windows, it would be nice to combine them as well. And so I ended up having four different shades in total instead of 10. And that was one of my favorite features right off the bat. In terms of like the tech aspect, I didn't want to go too crazy because this is an Airbnb, but we ended up going with a system that allows all of these main shades to be controlled with the touch of a remote. And on top of that, also have smartphone control as well. So here are just the four different individual settings. You can also change all of them at the same time. And so in terms of the actual wiring setup, because there was already a bulkhead for all of the blinds to go, we had four different outlets added and one additional outlet for this media wall. Before we talk about that though, I'm gonna show you guys how this remote works. So I just go ahead and press that. All these shades come down at a really nice speed and this is easily one of the best choices. It wasn't actually that much more expensive than I expected. A lot of that cost did come in the electrical process and adding additional outlets, but depending on your setup, it might be easier than you might expect. Um, so yeah, as you can see, that is how this works. And the power actually goes from the bulkhead itself through the media wall, and that is allowed to have outlets for both the TV and the desk setup without having any visible wires. If you're in a condo, for example, and you have drop ceilings already, that's like a very good use of the space. And the actual media wall size matches in line with the actual drop ceiling to the window with all the nice can lights. So at night, there's like a very nice like glow from all these replaced LEDs, which are pretty inexpensive to just give off like the perfect futuristic looking experience of the media room. In terms of the actual like baseboard heaters, I live in Canada, so it does get a little bit cold. And although heat was kind of my biggest concern about this unit without any air conditioning, the baseboards used to be scattered all the way throughout. There was like five of them and it just didn't look very good. They were like the old aluminum baseboards, but there wasn't really any choice but to replace them with baseboard heaters once again. Went to Home Depot, got some for $100. They looked pretty simple actually. And you guys commented on the last video what exactly they were and they're pretty standard ones, nothing special. And instead of having four of them all the way across, I ended up having two of them replaced into power outlets for like charging your phone if you're just like watching TV um, and having two of them placed one on each side. And the wattage is higher than the original baseboards. So in terms of heat, there's no compromise. And as I mentioned in Canada, they were like under a hundred dollars overall. I feel like this was like a pretty good risk in terms of a crazy idea. If you guys have any other crazy ideas that you think I should try in the future, whether it is on my properties or on somebody else's, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.